Review copy provided by Nintendo. Nintendo, that was just super nice of you. Hello, my Legion demolishing friends. Arlo here, and today we're reviewing... Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, yet another Wii U game getting a second life on Switch. Or, uh, I guess a third life, because it was on 3DS too. The big question is, will this non-canonical crossover event offer me pure fan bliss? Or will it send me into a nerd rage? Let's find out. That is, until a unique soul caught her attention. The soul of the... Hyrule Warriors is, of course, a Dynasty Warriors game with a Zelda twist, and the thing that drew me to the game most strongly is how it incorporates aspects of just about every major Zelda game out there. I mean, this is basically a Zelda fan game, just developed by a prominent studio. It's always fun to see fans of a game series come together and create the kind of product that they would really like to play, and these guys brought tons of awesome fan service to Hyrule Warriors. The story involves the opening of portals and the mixing of dimensions and whatnot, so there's an actual reason why all these different times lines are mashing together. This gives us ridiculous scenarios where Midna and Sheik and Fi are helping you find the Master Sword in the Temple of Time, or you're taking on Girahim and Zant and Argorok in the Palace of Twilight. It's just silly fun, and the inclusion of slightly more obscure characters like Agatha and Darunia makes it feel like the developers really are fans of the series. Also, look at this Ganondorf! He's seriously the coolest! They were like, let's make our own awesome version of Ganondorf and make him as cool as we possibly can, and eh, there he is! The huge mashing of Zelda goodness is great, though the story itself is fairly basic. Narration with a handful of simple pictures tell most of the story between scenarios, and even the actual cutscenes just involve the characters talking to each other most of the time. Then the plot points are often kind of dumb. <laughs> I mean, they had to shoehorn a lot of stuff into the game, and sometimes the explanations for why some things are the way they are are, you know, whatever. Really, the biggest problem, though, is that I just think they could have done more with it. More fun character interactions, like really exploring what would happen if you mixed these worlds together. So, in the end, it's cheap. Just your run-of-the-mill anime stuff, though it is still fun and I still enjoyed it to a good degree. Before Hyrule Warriors was announced, I incorrectly believed that these kinds of games were about hacking through hordes of enemies and that was it, and that all the fun was in the novelty of these massive numbers of baddies and the sense of power that came from destroying them en masse. And it is true that you kill lots of baddies. These maps can hold impressive numbers of units, which makes each scenario feel more like an actual military battle, and it is indeed satisfying to use all the crazy elaborate moves that you disposal to knock a hundred of them to kingdom come at once, but that combat is held up by a very fun strategy system. Each map contains a number of keeps and outposts which pump out units for whichever side controls them, so naturally taking as many as you can is one of your goals. Then the different scenarios will throw lots of missions and side missions at you. Defeat all the Gibdos that just spawned, escort the bomb chew to the enemy base, stop the messenger before it calls for reinforcements, capture specific keeps to weaken the enemy commander. There are usually multiple playable characters on the field and you can switch between them and even use the map to command them to move around and attack or defend certain units. The game really keeps you on your toes. It's all about time management and priority. Can I break away from this mission long enough to do that side mission? Should I focus on strengthening our army by taking keeps, or should I go straight for the enemy commander? My home base is weakening. Should I break off from this boss battle to go help out, or should I just hold on a little longer? Do I have time to take out these last big pose before the rally troops can reach the enemy keep and raise their morale? Sometimes it's like a juggling act, and it's a lot of fun. And all the Zelda goodness makes it even more so. The developers stuck all sorts of little Zelda-isms into the gameplay. Cutting grass and breaking pots to get hearts and rupees, activating owl statues so you can warp around the map, and even hunting down gold skulltulas and heart pieces. The game features a number of series bosses which function much like they do in the games they come from, meaning that you can open them up to attack using the right item. You'll pick up a number of these Zelda staples on your journey, and this is a fun little nod, but beyond bosses, I wouldn't say that these items are particularly useful, at least not based on my time with the game. They don't have as much practical use in battle as I would like. There are individual enemies that you can weaken just like the bosses, but you just switch to the weapon, wait for your cue, pop it off, and attack. There's no real difference between the bombs or the arrows or the boomerang. They can be used to open stuff up on the map, but it's the same thing. If it's a giant rock, hit it with a bomb. If it's weird vine things, hit them with a boomerang. Kind of a missed opportunity, but hey, I still like it. Battling will earn you experience, and leveling up will naturally make your warriors stronger, but even further, downed enemies will drop both rupees and materials which you can spend in the bazaar between battles. Here you can manage your weapon abilities, drop some cash to quickly train up low-level warriors, and brew useful potions, but the main thing is advancing your skill trees. And you know Arlo, collecting stuff from enemies and using it to make yourself stronger, 
love it. Each warrior's got their own tree, and there are some really useful abilities to unlock. All of this combines into a very nice feedback loop. Each scenario engages you with all these things to do and the allure of slowly taking control of the battlefield, which is very satisfying. Then the rewards go into your warriors, which pushes you to jump into another scenario ASAP and get more rewards. All XP and levels and everything carry across all game modes, which can cause some difficulty annoyances, but for the most part is awesome. When your Zant gets stronger, your Zant gets stronger, period. Every time you pump resources into any character, it feels like your entire force gets a little stronger, because if you need to use that character somewhere down the line, you'll be better prepared. Speaking of modes, Hyrule Warriors is not lacking in content. The main legend mode will take a good number of hours to beat. I couldn't accurately keep track, but I want to say it took me something like 15 or 20. Then on top of that, you've got this gigantic adventure mode. Here you move around a map, taking on regular battles, as well as fun little challenges like beating a certain number of baddies within a time limit or completing something with a specific character. You also acquire items, which you can use to uncover secrets, and there are all sorts of rewards to earn. Two complaints here though. One, it's more convoluted than it needs to be, especially the process of looking for secrets. Two, much of your progress in this mode depends on the rank you get after each challenge, which is determined by how many kills you get, how much damage you take, and your time. As far as I can tell, the game won't tell you how long is too long, or how many enemies is too few. You've got to look it up yourself unless you just want to play levels over and over again trying to get an A rank and wondering what keeps going wrong. And killing enough enemies is just a little too grindy. It's basically punishing you for being strong enough to do really well on the stage and beat it quickly. These are fairly small complaints though, seeing as these adventure mode maps offer so, so much additional content, and there's a great big list of maps to choose from. I mean, you're looking at dozens, if not hundreds of hours here, if you so desire. Presentation-wise, the game is okay. The characters and all their silly attack animations look good, but it's obvious that a lot of sacrifices had to be made to allow the game to render so many enemies at any given time. The environments are very drab and lacking in detail, which kills a little bit of the magic of running around in all these Zelda series locales. Fortunately, the sacrifices do work for the most part. The game runs quite well, regardless of how many baddies I'm hacking through, which is much appreciated. In handheld mode, the frame rate does take a little hit, but it's still consistent enough to be playable without any big drops. The biggest problem with the look of the game is that it can be really buggy. Sometimes I get all this bizarre, glitchy texturing and shading, and character movements are choppy and twitchy. There are other visual glitches too, and so far none of it has affected the gameplay, but it can look positively ghastly at times. At first it seemed like I was only experiencing this in handheld mode, but then I started seeing it on the TV as well, and now whenever I start a scenario, I just never know if everything on screen is gonna look normal. It wouldn't be so bad if technical limitations and faulty code were the only reasons for a presentation that bounces from middle of the road to kind of bad, but the game just kinda gives off an aura of cheapness as well. Like I said, most of the cutscenes involve the characters standing around talking to each other with nothing interesting happening at all. None of them are voice acted, and while I'm sure someone could argue that this is truer to the Zelda spirit, I just think it's weird watching pre-rendered CG cutscenes where the characters only make annoying mules and whimpers while the text scrolls. The music is also only okay. It's nice to have a range of Zelda songs to listen to, but I feel like they could have dug a little deeper into the catalog like they did with their characters, and most of the songs are played with screechy, wailing electric guitar Cars. This is fun in its own silly, over-the-top way, but if I'm honest, I sometimes find myself turning the music off completely to get away from it for a while. Further complaints about Hyrule Warriors? Hyrule- that's really hard to say, did you know that? I've done this take like 80 times. Hyrule Warriors just comes out really weird. Anyway, perhaps my biggest complaint regarding the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is the minimap. It's just too small, especially in handheld mode. It can be really hard to keep track of everything that's going on, and that's especially true because the game just doesn't give you enough info on that map. There are lots of little symbols on there, but it can still be hard to tell who is what and what is where. As a result, in some scenarios, I constantly find myself pausing, scrolling down to battlefield info, and hunting down what I need. This person needs help. Where is this person? Let's see. Uh, okay, there they are. The such and such sanctuary is about to fall. Where is that again? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, th there it is. You gotta stop the summoner from calling more monsters. Which one of these dots is him again? Hmm, uh, oh yeah, okay, I got it. <laughs> it can really kill the flow of the game, and I think a few more clear symbols on the map would largely fix the problem. Then, in addition to being disappointed by the bland look of the maps, I also wish each one was a little more unique and interesting. The game toys with a very small handful of interesting ideas, such as the Twilight Realm obscuring parts of the map, or boulders rolling down Death Mountain and damaging other keeps until you can take the keeps they're coming from. But the vast majority of the time, these maps are just collections of squares 
and corridors in a slightly different formation each time and with a slightly different background. It just feels like a little more could have been done, especially considering the items at the player's disposal. If the game has one very big weakness though, it's that it's extremely repetitive. When you're talking about regular scenarios, which you'll be playing the majority of the time, it's really all the same thing again and again and again with only slight variations. Then the sheer number of adventure mode maps to get through and characters to play with and level up means that this is a total grind fest. It takes a lot of hours, very samey hours, to get anywhere in this game. Whether or not this is a problem depends entirely on each person and whether or not the game fits their tastes. There are some games that I can basically play forever, just hours upon hours for eternity, because I just love that core gameplay so much. And you see this a lot with fans of the Warriors series. Some people will tell you that they've sunk hundreds of hours into Hyrule Warriors. Others will tell you they played it for an hour and got bored. If you fall head over heels for the gameplay, you'll love that you've always got some grindy thing to have fun with on your Switch. If not, you'll probably just hate it. So where do I stand in this regard? Well, I definitely enjoy the gameplay. That feedback loop has got its hooks in me pretty good right now. I just don't know if I can say that it will keep me for much longer. If completion was a little more attainable, I think I might shoulder through, but the number of hours I could potentially dump into this game is so staggering that I feel like one of these days I'm gonna wake up and just be like, I think I'm done playing Hyrule Warriors. You know what I mean? Has that ever happened to you? I feel like it will reach a point where it's so repetitive and grindy that it will feel too much like a job and I'll just want to stop. I haven't reached that point yet and I don't know if or when I will though, so in the meantime, I'm enjoying the game. It's not a deep game, nor is it a particularly stimulating one, but it's just dumb fun. It's like drinking water. It goes down easy and I've basically got as much as I could ever possibly want. And of course, it's made even more fun with all that Zelda goodness. I mean, who's never dreamed of playing an officially licensed Zelda game where you get to be Ganondorf and just beat the absolute tar out of Link and Zelda in a story scenario multiple times. Also, let's just say I've been waiting for this for a long time. And despite issues like lower frame rate in a screen that's a little too small to comfortably display the map and on-screen text, it's still the perfect game to play on your Switch. It's a colossus of a time waster, and I'm happy that whenever I get the itch to take some capes and kill a million guys, I can just hop on over and have a good 15 or 20 minutes of battling fun. And as Midna, no less. I mean, you get to be Midna. Pay attention, Sakurai. I give Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition a solid five out of seven. Before we go, it's time for an Arlo Direct. I have nothing to report on Arlo Palooza 2018 other than the fact that it is indeed happening, it will most likely be in October, and it will be in Northern California. I'm bringing it up now because I want you to know about it. I want you to hear the name and go watch the recap video from Arlo Palooza 2017 and think real good about the whole thing so that when the time comes to start selling tickets, you can't say I didn't warn you. More info will come later, so stay tuned. And with any luck, we can get enough people to make this event even bigger and better than last year. See you next time with another shockingly informative of Arlo Direct.